My latest two watches have just arrived. Uh, I ordered them from a company called Mercure in um, China. This watch I didn't really expect to order. I saw it on the website while I was ordering this watch. Uh, this is the watch I went there to buy and then I saw the other one. Uh, there is um, a full review on this. Um, if you just click the link there and it'll take you to that one or I'll leave it down below. So I've just got the watches today so by the time this watch uh, video comes out I would have already been wearing this one. Uh, and a review of it. So this is the other one that I got and um, I just liked it um, for a couple of reasons. I do like this box um, by the way. Um, it's it's a very Breitling-esque type. Now this is my Breitling um, case that I've had for probably about 20 years now I think. Um, and this is theirs but if you look at the size of it so you've got one from a Swiss brand which where watches cost thousands and then you've got one from China which doesn't cost so much. So this is the watch. So it's basically a, a tuner, uh, not a tuner sorry, a turtle. There's so many um, names for Seikos nowadays. So I got the orange one instead of a black one because I already have a SKX and a, a turtle and other ones. So I thought I would try this one, and one of the other reasons is I'm considering getting a Doxa with an orange uh, dial, and I've never had a watch with an orange dial before, so I thought this could be a good opportunity to uh, to buy this one and see what it's like if I like the orange dial. Let's unpeel this and take a look at it. Now this uh, watch company actually makes um, watches for other brands, micro brands. So I think what they've done is they've just basically just put their own name on it and uh, and produce one for themselves. Because if you go on Amazon and other sites and so on, you'll find um, homages to turtles. Is it a turtle? It's kind of a turtle. It's not exactly. Um, I don't have my turtle here to hand, but when I do the full uh, review and the video, um, I'll compare the two. But uh, let's see what else is inside. So... You get all the paperwork. It seems to be quite full of stuff in there. Oh, there's something else as well. Ah, well, that's quite good. It's a little tool. Is there a strap in here as well? It didn't say on the website. No, unfortunately no extra strap. But that's quite cool. Now, um, £165 this one uh, is. Um, there's the... Uh, uh, there's all the details. 1st of Feb 2021. And this is their card, a cleaning cloth. Danger, look out for $100. What's this? Uh, post your watch on your... Uh... Oh, right, okay. Um, I'll read that and then this will be just the manual. I think fairly simple to, to know, but I, I mean, I'm impressed. To be honest, I'm really impressed with the fact that I've only paid this amount of money for it. Um, it's pretty good. That's a bit stiff, but I like the case. In the case, I'll probably use for some some other watches. But um, yeah, I'll see what it's like um, over the next few um, weeks or so, um, and then uh, give you my um, initial thoughts on the watch afterwards. But uh, yeah. Seems to be quite nice, quite well finished. Now is this, apparently that's a ceramic. It's a ceramic bezel. Wow. Okay, so let's continue the video in a few days. I've had the watch now for a few weeks and just before I get into the rest of the video, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the unboxing that I referred to it as the turtle. Even the website uh, refers to it as a turtle in their title description. But if you look at it compared to a Seiko turtle, the case is actually different. You can see at the bottom where the crown is, it's a lot thicker than, uh, than the Seiko turtle. The Seiko turtle is more of a, a, a symmetrical uh, shape size uh, case, uh, whereas this one isn't. Now what this is, is actually the exact same as the Seiko SPB153. Uh, also known as the Willard. Now, um, for me, that's not really such a big deal. I didn't really buy it because it's a turtle shape. I like the watch, and um, the fact that it's uh, more of a Willard shape, it's 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 actually a, a better thing for me. I prefer it. 
The Willard is currently for sale um, in England for about £1,200 at uh, a Seiko dealer. Now, this is 10% of that price, uh, so I think it's an absolute bargain. If, you, if you're if looking at a watch which is similar to a Willard, now you can get it in a black as well, but obviously I've got it in the orange, uh, and it runs uh, the Seiko NH35 movement, so basically you're buying a Willard for 10% for of the price uh, of, of a Willard. So it's uh, 44 millimeters uh, in diameter, and it's uh, 46 millimeters from lug to lug, uh, and it's 14 millimeters thick. So it's actually not too thick. It actually wears a lot smaller on the wrist than, than you'd imagine. That's what I really like about these uh, shapes of uh, cases that the Seiko make, like the Turtle and, the, and this one. I've never had a Willard in my hand, and um, I don't really expect to buy one. I think they're a bit overpriced. So for, to get this, um, I'm really pleased with that. It has a sapphire crystal, a, a domed sapphire crystal, which is great, I guess. Um, for me, I don't mind the Seiko crystals that they use, their own proprietary uh, crystals, the hard legs. It's not such a big deal. I know a lot of people prefer to have a sapphire crystal more than uh, uh, than their uh, proprietary, but this one does have a sapphire crystal if it bothers you. Now, it comes on this uh, rubber strap, which is probably one of the most comfortable rubber straps that I've ever worn. On the back of the strap, you've got these ridges which grip the back of your wrist and it stops the watch from flinging around on your wrist. I really like that. I do like this strap a lot, but I've not been wearing it on this strap. If you look at it, if you, you see how soft it is, it stretches. Uh, the reason I don't wear it on this strap is because of these ridges. I don't like this pattern on the, on the strap. I would wear it on this strap otherwise, but I just don't like that at all. So I've been uh, wearing it on uh, several different types of straps, uh, rubber straps. I've uh, I've looked at the ones that I've got. I'm still sort of deciding what type of strap I want to wear on it permanently, but um, it's it's been constantly changing from rubber to to leather. The strap does have quick release pins, but because it's so thick, you can't actually get your finger into there to open it. So you will need a tool to actually take the pin out. But it's fairly simple. It's this is the strap I'm currently wearing the watch on. Now I did have it actually on a orange ISO strap, but I felt it was a bit too much. Uh, it was a bit too orange. Just to, for me, it didn't it didn't work. But I know a lot of people do prefer to have the same color dial and strap together. It has a bi-directional 180 click bezel. Now I say click, but it actually sounds more like a ratchet sound. If you listen to the sound it makes, It sounds more to me like a ratchet than an actual click, but it's still solid. It does. There's no back play to to speak of. And you see, when it does go back, it goes. It springs straight back to the po the position it was before, and it the, it actually does line up exactly. Now Seiko fans will know that uh, Seikos are very well known for having misaligned uh, chapter rings. So this one does actually line up, which is quite impressive. Now the bezel is a ceramic bezel. I'm personally not a fan of ceramic bezels. I do prefer bezels which uh, kind of age with the watch, which get scratched and which get dented. I've got uh, a very old Seiko and it's got dents and scratches and it just adds to the watch's personality, I think. This is just going to stay exactly the same. What these will look like in 30 years time, I think they're going to look exactly the same as they are now. For some people, they like that. It has applied hour markers filled with C3 Luminova. Uh, as does the, the hands. If you look at the hands and the applied markers, you can just see the hands are black. The surround round the hour markers is actually silver. If they just had black on the hands and the um, hour markers or silver, I think it would have looked a lot better. It just looks a bit misplaced. The colors don't line up. That's just a personal preference. One of the other things I don't like about the dial is the actual date window. I don't like the silver border around it. It does cover the date slightly. I think if they just left it without uh, the border, it would have been a lot better. The logo is also applied, and the way they've done it is it, f it looks like it's actually floating on top of the dial. I really do like that. That's, that's a nice touch to it. It has a screw down crown. Now, when you unscrew the crown, it is a little bit difficult to get hold of. That is because of the, the, the guards. If you look at the side profile, there does look like there's room there to get your finger on underneath, but it's really difficult to unscrew the crown and screw the crown in. You've got to really just sort of get your fingertips to get it instead of just having your finger below. 
Now when you pull out the crown, you can see there's a red marker there. That's to tell you that uh, the crown is unscrewed. Uh, so it's just a bit of a warning. They do make a big deal about this. Now that is, is a good thing to have, uh, but realistically, I think most people uh, once they're, they're only going to unscrew the crown every so often when they're picking up the watch or when they're readjusting it It's not really going to make a big difference between that But when you when it's closed you can't see uh, the red marker at all But even when it's slightly open you can just see the red starts to come out So it is a good thing for people who are a bit worried that their watch may get damaged with water It has a screw down back uh, with this turtle logo. I really like this turtle logo. It's it's heavily it's not even it's more it feels like it's applied it's actually feels like it's actually not engraved there or embossed it feels like they've actually applied the uh the turtle i do like that a lot this is a much better back case than having a clear back where you can see the movement and it's 35 not a pretty movement this i think looks a lot better than having a see-through back and they've actually thought about something i do appreciate watch companies which go to this uh, length of actually thinking of putting something on the back and not just uh, having an open case so you can see the movement. They actually have to think about this. You can just buy a back case which is see-through and just stick it on. That's lazy in my opinion. The side of the watch has a polish finish to it and you can just see there's a, a line which breaks up the polish and the brush finish. Now I'm not a big fan of watches which have two finishes. I much rather have a watch either it's brushed all or polished all but um, I know they the vast majority of people prefer, prefer to have this kind of finish to it. At the beginning of the unboxing, I did mention that uh, I was looking to buy a Doxa Sub 300 uh, with an orange dial. I've never had an orange dial before. Most of my dials are either white or gray or, or black, quite boring. So I thought I'd, I really like the Doxa. I like the look of the Doxa, uh, the hands, and it just it appealed to me, but I've never seen one in person. So, and they're quite expensive. They're around about, I think, £1,800 at the moment. So I didn't want to spend all that money on a watch where I wasn't sure if I would like the dial or not um, because I've never had an orange dial. So uh, this kind of killed two birds with one stone. I can see what the orange dial looks like or a orange dial whether or not I'd like to wear one. Uh, and I do, I do like it. It has made me th um, more inclined to buy the Doxa now. Uh, and I needed a cheap watch for when I'm traveling. When you go, when I when I go traveling, I don't have to worry about the watch being lost or stolen. So to have a watch which is just like a couple of hundred dollars, and if it gets damaged, it doesn't matter. If it gets stolen, it doesn't matter. And when you're at the airport, you've got to take your watch off when you go through security. So you put your watch in the little in the little basket. It goes through, and you could be standing on one side, and the watch and your other belongings have gone through, and you don't know who's on the other end. They could pick up your watch and walk away with it. So if you've got like a, a two, three thousand pound watch, somebody could just simply pick it up and walk away with it and you'd be none the wiser who took it. So to have a cheap watch for me uh, when I'm traveling is ideal and this is perfect for that. So I will be getting the Docsurf probably in the next few months or so and I will do a video about that. I might do a comparison with this and the Docsurf but I will be doing a, a comparison with, uh, with these two. I think they are so similar uh, it, it, I've just got to do a comparison with them. I, I do like this. This is the one I usually take when I'm traveling, but it's something nice to have uh, a bit of a change. So I'll do a video of the comparison in the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that one.